Oh, have you ever been? Do you ever have you ever been making out with a girl and you're like, all right, this is enough? <laughs> In what way? Like it's too much making out, or it's like not good? <laughs> it's too much. It's it's, it's, too, it's too much. It's, kissing, it's, it? it's too much kissing. It's <laughs> it's it's what? enough. She's just like, mm, what is this? <laughs> Like, well, I usually I feel like it would escalate to the next step, next phase. No? Well, maybe, maybe, let's say, maybe after you've done the deed. And oh, you're, yes. And you're, 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 you're cuddling, I guess, I suppose. Oh. And then she starts making out with you and you, you're repulsed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> it happens every night. My go-to is usually to, if I finish and then we're, we're making out, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. I will, if she really wants to keep making out, I will grab a pillow and kind of hold it over. <laughs> hold it over her head. Wow. Wow. <laughs> just kind I of, never thought about and, that. And she'll, she'll stop. The impulse yeah. to kiss me will, will, will stop. And then there's like a ton of work I have to do after that. <laughs> But I won't get into it. Sure, sure. There's so much work after that. Yeah, you have to go to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always have to go to Home Depot right after that. Every time after I finish and a girl kisses me too much, I always do my pillow thing and then I have to go to Home Depot. And yeah. it's just, it's <laughs> annoying. It's like hydrochloric yeah. acid. <laughs> you, have to, you have to go to Home Depot and then Old Navy to buy a new outfit. <laughs> I got to go to Old Navy. I got to go to the dry cleaners. Yeah. I got to go to... Uh, I gotta go to Home Depot. Usually get an eighty-gallon barrel, some hydrochloric acid, <laughs> and uh, and then there's a lot of like well, cell phone changing and. I might, yeah, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, because I just get, it's like I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it just I, I'm like an, enough, but I can't say that. You right, can't, you right. can't be like all right, enough. Well, a great way I was to pretend like you have to pee or something. Yeah, yeah, and then you go out the front. Well, door. normally I just you get fully dressed. <laughs> Yeah, you grab yeah. your keys off the nightstand, <laughs> and then you, you pretend that you thought the the bathroom was the front door. <laughs> you come back, and then you kind of, you block her number. <laughs> yeah, and you, you, never, you never see her. You block her number. So uh, that's <laughs> that's has always been. But, yeah, I've never figured out a, a good way to 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 get out of it because I don't want to be rude, and I like the 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 lady, but right. after. You know, after you do the deed, I don't, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want anything. To, I don't want to be touched. I, I don't want to be left alone. Well, really, no, like, because I don't want to kiss, and I don't want to like fondle. No, I'll, cu- I'll, I'll cuddle, cuddle, cuddle throw on a movie, but I do yeah. need like a movie. I need something to be like. Yeah. I'm interested in that now. <laughs> you can be right here. Yeah, there, yeah. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't want to talk. <laughs> I don't answer any fucking questions. <laughs> All right. I, yeah, I just want to watch Scooby Doo Two Monsters uh, Unleashed. I'm not thinking about my fucking wolves. Yeah, I want to watch Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed or Garfield Two: A Tale of Two Kitties. <laughs> Regardless, it's animated and it is a sequel. Yeah. Okay. I'm not trying to have your vile sex again. <laughs> I'm trying to do your dirty, your dirty act again yeah. that you you talked me into. <laughs> <laughs> that you used your sorcerous ways yeah, to exactly. ensnare me, <laughs> and now you're trying to trick me again. And this time, f- fool me once, shame on, shame on yeah. m- m- you. Well, fool me twice, y- you can't fool me again. Yeah, actually, Fred and the gang kind of have a mystery to solve. <laughs> yeah, and it's a little more wholesome than what you had in mind. <laughs> Whore. <laughs> kidding man what a what an aggressive intro to this podcast <laughs> well that was aggressive i think mine was just sort of a, uh, that, yeah 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 a thing, right. that every guy, a thing that every guy goes through but they they're too afraid to talk about and I, <laughs> yeah. and this, is, this is a podcast about having discussions <laughs> hard discussions for silenced men <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah that's exactly what this is um joe do you want to start us off i'll start us off um so <laughs> Um, let me see, let me see what I got here. Oh, this is great. This is I'm I'm really excited about this. Now you are familiar with Burning Man, correct, Trent? Well, I know. I thought I thought I knew what it was, but apparently, no, I don't know what it is. Why do you say that? Because I thought it was a music festival. Right. It was more than that. I I'd, read recently uh, that there's it's not music. Well, I think there is music there. Yeah. But I think it's not. Yeah. The Express. 
sole purpose of it isn't like a music festival. Sure. But I also don't really understand it. I've never been. No. It's not really my bag. <laughs> not, not our scene. <laughs> it's definitely indie, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I think, but what I, I mean, I, it's a, well, first of all, it's a gathering of nonconformists. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or so it began. Yeah, that's and, how it started. But they do all kinds of, you know, shrooms and have sex. And it's like, a, there's music, there's like arts, there's, I don't know, live probably fucking poetry just a bunch of weird yeah people doing it, weird shit juggling was, and who knows what it is yeah it was started by hippies and yeah. now it's just almost exclusively in investment bankers <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly and well, chris rock yeah well this year um i mean the the grooves and vibes were beset by rain and mud I, yeah so this is an article from the uh from the wall street journal ah, okay Yeah, Um, and this says, rain and mud test spirits of festival goers, okay? The technology entrepreneurs, artists, and other free (laughs) spirits. How how is that even a real group of people? (laughs) Technology entrepreneurs and other free spirits? Yeah. And just lumping the word artist next to them? (laughs) Flock to the desert for the annual Burning Man Festival were accustomed to weathering withering heat and dust storms this year they wound up wallowing in the muck the desert storm uh turned the lake the uh, the dry lake bed into a thick slimy clay over the weekend transforming burning man's site about 90 miles north of reno nevada into a quagmire and forcing the closure of roads in and out of the event attending attended by tens of thousands of people yeah Everybody went there, had a really chill time, had some ego death with the shrooms, and then got stuck in a traffic jam saying, Move out of the way! What <laughs> God! <laughs> we gotta it's, get back to the bay! It's, so it's held in a dry lake bed. That's what it says. Yes. Yeah, it's held in the middle of the desert. In a dry lake bed. In a dry lake bed, but it turned into a pile of goop. It turned and, into a lake. It turned into a, a, yeah, an actual a, lake. Yeah. A, a wet lake. Um... <laughs> So on Monday of the sunshine returning, Burning Man organizers said they began allowing the thousands still stuck in in the mud to to gradually file out. Yeah, um, an annual rite known as the Exodus. Fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, I so well I I saw this because I follow Chris Rock on Instagram and he posted. He's a video. Burning Man. He was, was at he Burning there? Man, and there's actually a story him and the DJ. Diplo <laughs> hitched hitched a ride with some guy that had a truck to to escape the the burning the what once was a, a fun festival turned into a, a kind of a waking nightmare. They they right. they hitched a ride with somebody who who had a truck and they they escaped. So they used their power and privilege to escape. And, <laughs> well, they they rode with just uh, c- civilians. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Despite the hardships, this is a quote from the article. Many said being mired in the muck didn't spoil the fun, describing it as another weird chapter in the festival's unusual history. <laughs> but here's a quote from one of the attendees: "Quote anywhere you want to go, you're completely caked in mud, and that sucks." <laughs> Said Matthew Fausberg, a 65-year-old video 65? video producer from Fairfax. <laughs> wow, that's what this festival is. It's like it's like 60-year-old, 40 insane. to 60-year-olds. Because I think they what it started in the 90s. You know, I don't know when it started. I don't know either, man. <clears throat> but now it's it's. Um, I just always I assumed it was 20-year-old ladies. I think there's some of that, but there's also it's like you said. There's like tech entrepreneurs. Yeah. So this one. Um, yeah, it says that, that Burning Man attracts all sorts of fun, uh, fun seekers and strives, but is known for luring celebrities from Silicon Valley titans. Billionaire and SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk said he is a Burning Man fan. Good God. And it, it, it's, also, it's also described as the nonconformist nine-day event. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very anti-establishment with uh, the tech titans <laughs> of the world. Yeah. Well, the more I hear about this, I more, the more I wish this flood was worse. <laughs> I wish and it turned quick sort of a, and took all of them under. Sort of a biblical flood. I wish that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really seems like God's trying to send a message to everyone there. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm upset that they got out as well. Um, Elon Musk's brother was there, Kimball Musk. Yeah, <laughs> Brock Pierce, a prominent Bitcoin entrepreneur, Ugh. the the co-founder of Google, was there. Uh, <laughs> just all these guys. I'm like, 
What one person died, by the way, in the muck. Not not one of the right ones. <laughs> Yeah. You just listed to all the people that should have died. <laughs> they go. <laughs> they did list all the people that should have died. But this this is my favorite part. Yeah. They go, one person died in the next paragraph. They go, still, the atmosphere at the event was largely positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thousands of attendees wanted, wandered the streets and partied into the early hours of the morning. Oh, well, good for them. <laughs> I'm glad they had fun. Uh, Imagine being the mother of the one guy that died and you read the article and then... <laughs> One guy died. <laughs> Everyone had a great, <laughs> mostly a great time. <laughs> Except for one guy. <laughs> Except for one guy. And he's really not that important. Uh, <laughs> but compared to being stuck in a traffic jam, is, is dying really so bad? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I, I thought, I know they, like, light something on fire. They, they mentioned that. The, they, they still did that. An effigy or something. An effigy of yeah. a man. What is an effigy? I don't even know what that is. Well, it's kind of a thing made of straw, something you can easily light on fire. Mm. It's kind of like, like uh, some, uh, So they do, in fact, burn, they burn a man there. They burn I a man. I believe they do. They burn a man, and they also, apparently, they kill a man. <laughs> they, they, every year, they burn one man, and then they kill one real man. <laughs> And the mud, but the vibes are always. But these festivals, I've never been to a festival. I've kind of have no desire to go. Uh, not really my scene, man. <laughs> but there was. Did you feel, hear about this other one that happened in New York? Electric Zoo. I did not hear about Electric Zoo. Well, there was a, a trampling. <laughs> what? what? They apparently Electric Zoo the fe- the festival. Oh, a trampoline. F- founders, yeah. I thought you said trampoline. a trampoline. Oh, no. Not, I'm sure there probably was a trampoline <laughs> there, too. But no, a trampling. Oh, my God. Apparently, they sold more tickets than they had availability. So, uh, they, they, all the people, that, the people that showed up late, they were like, yeah, we, we, you know, we made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the spreadsheet we 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 miscalculated. They're it. trying to explain this to people who want to go you're high on you Molly, know. going to a, to the the electric zoo festival. <laughs> they're like, yeah, we we fucked up, Charles in the back. You really fucked up. You know what? It, you know what it was? We actually uh, we knew we were at capacity, but we just wanted to keep making money. <laughs> and, so uh, so they were trying to turn people away. Yeah, at the gates. But people, you wouldn't believe the show. People stormed the gates after they spent thousands of dollars on people love storming <laughs> things. Festival, <laughs> festival tickets. Yeah, people do love storming things, and some pe- some people, some of those people are right, and some of those people are wrong. And I'm not going to say which ones are. But <laughs> I'll just tell you this: I know I was with the right people when I stormed the correct thing <laughs> on a day that will live yeah. in, in not infamy. <laughs> so wow, yeah. Uh, festivals are a nightmare. I mean, I've been to... I've never really gone to anything. I did go to one. I mm-hmm. snuck into something called Rock Fest that I had no interest in any of the bands. But it was in Kansas City, and I snuck in when I was like 23 mm-hmm. or something. And it was like pouring rain, and it was covered in mud. Mm-hmm. And we walked in, and Five Finger Death Punch was playing. <laughs> and That's who you would think it would headline something called Rock Fest. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, they're playing their hit song, Burn, Motherfucker, Burn, Motherfucker, Burn. It's t- mm. something to that effect yeah they, i mean trent the whole place was covered in mud i mean it was like burning man 23 in there <laughs> there was a lady that was pregnant passed out in the mud and, yeah and but there were all these chicks on their boyfriend's shoulders sure and the guy in, in five finger death punch on stage goes if you're one of these chicks out there sitting on your boyfriend's shoulders and you're blocking the view of the guy behind you well, I have to say this. If you want to stay up there, you got to show me your tits. <laughs> and they all pulled their tops wow. off. And then the poor sucker standing behind them. <laughs> Still getting none of it. Yeah, they just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... I'm just going, well, this sucks. Yeah, this sucks. And I just have to stare at some lady's bare back. Yeah, but a festival is a nightmare. A festival is a nightmare. Sucks. Yeah, it's for all... 21-year-olds. Shut them all down. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, shut them all down. <laughs> well... Speaking, the it's speaking of Elon Musk. Oh, I think he's going to be a recurring. I think so. <laughs> person in this episode. Uh, tw- this is from the uh, the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. Twitter supervans resist new X brand. Oh. 
<laughs> you lost me at Twitter super fan. Yeah, well, Jesus we'll Christ. We'll get into that. <laughs> a month after Elon Musk rebranded Twitter as X, some users are still resisting the change so much that they are finding ways to pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're using the classic <laughs> la 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 <laughs> technique. La, 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 la. <laughs> no! <laughs> Using specially designed software tools, they are reinstating the old blue on white bird image oh my on God. their devices in place of the new icon, a stylized white on black version of the 24th letter. <laughs> get, X, a, get a life. X, oh my the Lord. 24th letter. <laughs> and they are reverting references to post back to tweets along with other user experience options. I just, this is a quote, I just find the X... So boring, and it's kind of depressing. It just gives off negative vibes, <laughs> says <laughs> Belinda Davy, a 36-year-old retail worker in Adelaide, Australia. Yeah, because Twitter was never depressing. It never gave off negative vibes. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a waking nightmare. That, that merry-go-round of, of a social media <laughs> yeah. app. Well... Jettisoning the globally recognized Twitter name and logo is among uh, myriad changes Musk has made to the 17-year-old platform since buying it in October, from upending its old blue checkmark verification system to creating an algorithmic feed that has heavily featured his own tweets. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he's... One, one might say it's a vanity project. <laughs> But, but changes are part of Musk's effort to reshape the microblogging platform into his his vision of an everything app. What what does it mean? Because it's the same thing as Twitter so far, just called X, but more of his he, well, more of his Elon Musk. You don't understand Elon Musk's <laughs> great vision. I don't of I, turning it into an everything app. I have the vision of a peon. And this is a man who sees through space <laughs> yeah, and you time. you can't understand his great vision. <laughs> I am an ant. Well, he wants what he wants to do is he wants to like turn it into a place where people can make financial payments, basically, and stuff like oh, that. Oh, like a Venmo or something. Like a Venmo, like a well, PayPal, PayPal, which he had a hand in starting, right? And people everything app. So you're gonna PayPal have, originally started as like a place where you could buy like child porn and not get caught. Really? By, yeah. <laughs> and he had a, he wants to sort of bring that. He back. wants to bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants yeah. Okay. And he, he well, wants to call it X. Yeah, that's understandable for him. You know, <laughs> and um, everything app. Anything you can do. Anything from buy a child porn. <laughs> To, be to, to, to sell child porn. <laughs> <laughs> to sell child porn, yeah. The whole gamut. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> That's my great vision. My great vision. It's so much bigger than what you could see. Yeah. Um, no, so, but that's interesting. So it's going to be like a transact, it's, you know, it's like a Venmo or a PayPal, but also you're going to have a piece of the Twitter thing. What else yeah. can, are you going to be able to do on it? Well, you can also post, post long form videos. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. <laughs> It's anything, oh. anything you can already do online. Yeah, you'll just be able to just, do all of that stuff on, there. Yeah, it's just on X instead of the other website you use. So you'll, is it a feed? So you'd be scrolling down and one guy goes, <laughs> has a tweet, Burning Man this year, LOL. And then <laughs> below that is Bob paid Chris $18 <laughs> for burger and milkshake. Yeah, yeah. And then below that is a video guy, hey guys. <laughs> I think that's his great vision. Yeah. What a hellscape. Yeah. <laughs> what a hellscape. Yeah. It sounds like a total <laughs> a total nightmare. So this this now this is the most insufferable quote. This is from Eric Wool, a 29-year-old who works as a media coordinator for the Tennis Channel. Fuck off. He, he he's encouraged by the X rebrand rebrand. And that it makes him want to use the app more. Quote, the bird was a good start, but for how far the platform has come, it needed a sophisticated refresh. <laughs> what is this? Because when you think of sophistication, <laughs> you think of Twitter.com or X. No. X. That's sophisticated. It's elegant. You think, you, you think of people dressed up in a suit and tie, <laughs> tweeting their every thought, their every waking thought. <laughs> Not somebody that has the not people that have the most free time on their hands. Sitting what in is their, this kid? What is his basement. life that he has that opinion? 
that he goes, you know, the bird was a nice start, but I mean, really, they were they're ready for a sophisticated. Yeah, I mean, it's just so just so f- sophisticated now. <laughs> and what is he do? Digital marketing for the tennis channel. The tennis channel. He's a media coordinator. Another. All these people that are in the Wall Street Journal, all of their jobs could be taken away, and the world would be. A hundred times better. It would be at least the exact same. It would be, no, it would be the exact same. <laughs> yeah. The exact same. If not better. A digital marketing specialist coordinator <laughs> for the tennis app. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody's job now. <laughs> <laughs> so people, other, so others saw the rebranding as the last straw and a disagreeable transformation, and vowed to flee from di- for different platforms. Still, others find the new name and look, among other alterations, upsetting or just unfamiliar, but they like the platform too much to leave. Who? I'd like to speak to these people who are like, I just love X so much. I, I mean, I hate what they've done to it, but I just like... See, the thing is, the word like is the wrong word there, because mm. they don't like it too much to leave. They're addicted to tweeting. Yeah. It's like saying you're... It's like a cigarette smoker. It's like they're not happy that they're a cigarette smoker. Yeah, but they—it's really hard to stop because people are addicted to Twitter, and people are oh, addicted yeah. to tweeting. Yeah, we have many friends. Sure, yeah. we certainly do. But you got cold turkey is the only way out. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to delete the whole app. I I deleted the app, and I tell you, I've never been happier unless I'm playing a video game. <laughs> Any video game? At yeah. All. Then I get really mad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Trent. Um, that's a fascinating story, and I can't wait to see what happens with this cool new uh, app that's mm-hmm. kind of sort of a bit of an everything app. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of Elon Musk... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is going to be sort of a... Now, now here's, here's this. Yeah. Now, this is a, an article from the, um, the Wall Street Journal. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, tech leaders are divided on AI's threat to humanity. No. Yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> Yeah, so um, artificial intelligence pioneers are fighting over which of the technology's dangers is the scariest. It's not even about whether it's scary at all. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, which de- one? Yeah, we- a weird first sentence. They're debating on which one of the dangers is the scariest. <laughs> Was this a sleepover? <laughs> I think its ability to... The deep fakes are the scariest. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, they're all holding flashlights under their, their chin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One camp, which includes some of the top executives building advanced AI systems, argues its creations could lead to catastrophe. And the other... I like how these are the people doing it. They go, <laughs> one camp, uh, the executives building the system say, oh, this could be calamitous. <laughs> but I'm building it. Yeah. Um, and the, another camp are scientists who say concerns should focus primarily on how AI is being implemented right now and how it could cause harm in our daily lives. Um, so, wait, hold on one sec. Well, yeah. Joe, it's something that needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be done. Um, oh, here's, so Altman, who's this guy, uh, Musk, and other top AI executives next week are expected to attend the first in a series of closed-door meetings about AI convened by U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer mm-hmm. to consider topics including, quote, doomsday scenarios. Also, why <laughs> is Musk still getting invited to stuff like this? <laughs> this... This well, would be like inviting Donald Trump to a real estate meeting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, listen, we know you've done some other stuff <laughs> <laughs> since you were the big real estate guy. Well, but yeah. We would love to have you in here. Well, this, I don't know. It's kind of a long story, but I, I read something in the New Yorker about how Elon Musk, we don't realize how much, how involved he is, he is in the government now. Because we rely on him on on a on a ton of it's, stuff. Yeah, it's weird. So we're basically we've fucked ourselves. Yeah, I mean, well, apparently his uh, his whatever his satellites, his Starlink, he shut it down during the Ukraine. Well, apparently invasion. they account for like one out of every four objects in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like our atmosphere is filled with like a fourth of his technology. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a fucking nightmare. He's going to be the dictator. Yeah. And if he's going to shut this podcast down and, and shoot us both in our <laughs> heads in the middle of the night. Uh, this we, yeah, we really, we have to, we all have to root for Mark Zuckerberg to kill this guy <laughs> when he fights him. In the big cage match. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Of course, after he must recover some surgery. Right, right. But no, we've said it before. We'll say it again. The echo chamber, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're team Musk. No, no, no. We're team, team Zuck. Zucker. Team Zuck team all the Zuck, way. Yeah. Team Zuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of my ideal man. That's, that's sort of my concept of the well, ideal it's, man. It's, it is like the embodiment of choosing the lesser of two evils. It's the perfect encapsulation. Right, and by lesser of two evils, you mean the ideal man. <laughs> is the sure. ideal body and the ideal personality. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, please, Zuckerberg, put us up in the algorithm. Um, <laughs> for all the attention it has been getting, though, serious public discussion of AI's existential risk, or the, quote, X risk. I wonder who came up with that <laughs> term. I wonder if he named anything else X. Um, as those most to worry about it like to call it. What, what is that? I, that's insane. Um, has until recently remained confined to a fringe of philosophers and AI researchers. All that changed with the release of Chat GPT <laughs> late last year. Subsequent improvements have delivered human like responses, igniting warnings. So systems could gain superhuman in- <sighs> intelligence. Prominent researchers, including Jeffrey Hinton, um, want to consider the godfathers of AI, have co- uh, contended it contains a glimmer of human like reasoning. Um, and that's the guy who left his role at Google this year to, to move more freely to discuss AI risks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then he goes on to say there's existential risk with, with warning uh, about these risks. There's a taboo that you'll be mocked and treated like a crazy person and affect your Who's job prospects. Who's treating these people like crazy people? Also, affect your job prospects. You created ChatGPT. Yeah. I think you'll get another job. Right. <laughs> What are you talking about? But who's who's like who, who who's listening to these people like hey AI it could have very horrible uh, reactions and then people are like ah you, you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> people people are like yeah it's, it seems to be they're, bad yeah they're acting like this is the guy who came out and said there's flying saucers <laughs> now that <laughs> took some risk sure yeah. yeah people can write him off but for to say that AI is scary is like it's the like most saying, common yeah, sense it's like saying the sky is blue uh, yeah and is falling which are both <laughs> 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 both true. Um, oh, oh, this is the last little little note on this whole thing. Some in the field argue that there is a paradoxical upside for AI companies to emphasize the X risk of the systems because it conveys a sense that their technology is extraordinarily sophisticated. How fucked up is that? <laughs> Quote, it's, it's obvious that these guys benefit from the hype being fueled, says Daniel Schoenberger, former Google lawyer who worked in 2018 list of AI whatever the fuck, Web Foundation. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't finish the last sentence. Yeah. But they love, so basically when people freak out and they go, it's going to take over the world, they go, yeah, I guess our technology is pretty good. Oh, they love it. They get off on that. They love it. They're a bunch of nerds. They're sickos. They're sickos, dude. They, go, they go to Burning Man every year. They go year. to Burning Man <laughs> and they, yeah. And, and they, they, they think they're artists and hippies because they go to Burning Man and, and then they go back to, to San Francisco after getting out of the traffic jam. They're yeah. in for four days. And then they go back and then they pioneer the next fucking world ending Chad GPT technology. And then they go and unplug it at the next Burning Man in Coachella <laughs> to be with other free thinkers. Yeah. Well, this is why I'm a, a, a huge proponent of bullying nerds again. Right. Or is that what put them here in the first place? Were they uh, bullied into... No, go ahead and finish your sentiment, because I think I agree. <laughs> I don't think... I think we need to... Because people think being like a scientist and stuff, it's in vogue now, you know? So those are like those are like the people everyone talks about Elon Musk and all these people. Right. But if you b- made it seem like it's lame, which it is. It's very lame. It's incredibly lame, well, but we did away. We go you're not you got to be nice to everybody and look how that treated us. It completely backfired. Yeah, you got two tech guys going to be in a cage who match. Dead set on, yeah, they're dead set on ruining the world and taking away everyone's jobs. <laughs> and rights. <laughs> now, if they just got shoved in a locker once in their life... See, I think they need to be shoved in a locker now. They need to, yeah. But you got to... It starts when you're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start them young. You got to start them young. <laughs> well, I can't tell if it's because they got shoved in lockers or they didn't get shoved in enough lockers, but I know that 
we the something we should try both ways. We should try shoving them into more lockers and then going back in time and stopping you guys from shoving them into lockers. <laughs> yeah. Something about the lockers and them getting shoved into it says a lot about what's going on right now. Yeah. I, I just can't determine which side uh, it is. And well, if somebody needs to do that study, I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh let me find where this starts here. Now, Trent, you're you know, with all due respect, you're no, you were no like jock or anything. I was no high jock. School. I was, I would. Uh, you, you, were never, you, you were never shoved in lockers no. of any kind. I've thought a lot about this. I've done a lot of journaling. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, I would say I'm sort of. I was sort of a uh, a second tier. Oh, okay. Cool, cool kid. Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah, I wasn't in the first tier. No, I wasn't. But I was like first. a personal clown for all of them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, 100%. same, same with me. Okay, yeah. Fine line though to being there is a being a nobody line. in a second tier cool kid in high school. But that, yeah, there is yeah. a fine line. But if you're on the right side of that <laughs> it's, line, it's a world you of better, difference. You better ride it for <laughs> for the rest of your life. Yeah. So that's yeah. I was a second tier cool kid and. Yeah, I was kind of friends with everybody except for the nerds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of, uh, not really nerds, but spot. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Spotify's one billion dollar podcast bet turns into a serial drama. Oh, interesting. The prospect of riches led to aggressive <laughs> investments in celebrity deals. Okay, tell me more. I still don't quite understand. Well, you know, Spot, Spotify, of course, the, the big one was Joe Rogan. They, Joe Rogan, to, right. They paid him so to they have pivoted exclusive to... rights to get into the podcasting game. Okay, got it. So Spotify spent more than $1 billion to pu- build a podcasting empire. <laughs> let, me, let me guess, it didn't pay off. <laughs> <laughs> you might be surprised. <laughs> it struck... Splashy deals with Kim Kardashian, the Obamas, and Prince Harry, and the Obamas. And, well, and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. <laughs> it paid two hundred eighty-six million for two podcast studios and spent two hundred fifty hundred thousand dollars and more an episode on exclusive shows to lure new listeners. The bet hasn't paid off. <laughs> Oh, you're telling me they're spending all the money in the world for the Obamas, Bruce Springsteen, and Joe Rogan, and Meghan Markle? Wasn't worth it? (laughs) Uh, Most of its shows aren't profitable, according to people familiar with the matter. And the company has recently cut staff and programming to slow its losses. Wow. They lost about $565 million in six months. (laughs) Jesus. That's the thing with all these companies, though, is like nobody nobody makes money anymore. Like Uber and it all, I know. They all, they're they all, all, they all they're lose like, money. We, don't, we thought this would work. <laughs> well, you know what I don't understand is they could take like a risk one year and like, like make a business pivot yeah. and then lose $500 million. But if you work for these company and you're like, I just want like a, a 10% raise yeah. and they go, well, 5% is kind of the... The most we really do on a year-to-year basis. <laughs> you guys just invested a billion dollars and lost five hundred million dollars. Yeah, give me eight thousand more dollars <laughs> a year. I'm the well, one programming. Uh, yeah, this shit. but I'm sorry, Joe. We just can't swing that. We can't, we can't swing that. That's just not just not in the books. It's not in the cards for you. Now we are going to fly in a guy on a private jet, pay him twenty six million dollars to tell <laughs> us how to shake things up. <laughs> Well, yeah, we we ha- we've really carved out about fifty million dollars for Meghan Markle. People are really 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 interested in what she has to say. So <laughs> that extra five grand, ah, it's just not in the cards for you. Uh, so here's the here's something interesting, though, Joe. No one in the business is making much money on podcasts. So, <laughs> oh, that's, that's me. <laughs> wait, no one in the podcast business at large. Yeah. Mm. So so we should stop. Kind of just. Maybe we should just stop recording right now. <laughs> but, hmm. but Spotify, which has spent far more on the medium than its rivals, has more to lose than most. Yeah. Okay. But isn't that interesting? That Spot- iTunes, a- Apple, they started all this. They started the podcast. Right. That's why it's called the podcast, the iPod, which doesn't exist anymore. I never even thought about it. And they just did that for free. 
What do you mean? Oh, oh, right. They didn't lose anything. They yeah, they didn't it. lose anything. But Spotify... That's why it doesn't pay to be late. And as I say this, we're oh, <laughs> the, the latest podcast <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally the newest. <laughs> hmm. well, yeah, but we don't get, do this for money. We, no, do it, um, we do it for fun. We do it for the hope but of money. you do want to get on the ground, in on the ground floor. Mm, somehow. The early bird gets the worm is what I've heard. The pool of podcast listeners is growing. That's good. That's good news. But the flood of shows on various streaming platforms make it makes it tough to break new hits. That's even that's true. That's so Sticky true. Mart's a nasty. The competition's nasty. <laughs> it is tough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but Spotify signed celebrities to pricey podcasting deals, twenty million or twenty million dollars or more. See, each. That's, this is oh, they're over inflating every like that's too much. I think. Yeah, that's why they're losing out. Well, sure. They could give us eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> we would work our ass off. <laughs> but people want to hear what the Obamas have to say. They have a production company. The Obamas have the production company Higher Ground and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They got mixed results. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. <laughs> what? They, they got, got mixed results on their podcast. What's what's their podcasting well, company called? They spent. <laughs> They paid these people $20 million to make podcast episodes. The Obama's production company made five podcasts at Spotify, and they signed a new deal with Amazon's Audible last year. Markle's only podcast, Archetypes, made its debut in August 2022 at the top of Spotify, Spotify's podcast charts, but failed to sustain a large audience and wasn't renewed for a second season. So they paid this. They paid one of the most uninteresting people in the world. <laughs> one 20, of the most interesting amounts of money. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty million dollars to make one season of a podcast that nobody listened to. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, because yeah, what? So the first episode, <laughs> people are like, "Oh, let's hear what she has to say," and then they go, "Oh my god, if I have to listen to this, <laughs> look at his basis, I'll fucking gouge my eyes out." <laughs> gouge my ears out yeah one of these the stars of the uh usa network series suits i'd love to hear what she her thoughts on the current state of affairs in the world yeah so they're thinking if we get big names pay them a ton of money but that big being a big name doesn't always account to being an interesting person i think we've learned that or you might be an interesting person but you may not have the best podcast may not be the most it's like nba players you have a big name go to a team but that team doesn't win the championship who wins a championship is like the best team yeah maybe filled with like no rock stars but together right like that's why we are (laughs) that's why they should give us one million (laughs) dollars instead of megan merkel it's it's the intangibles show the intangies Investors last year said they wanted to see the company start making money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can you read that one more time? <laughs> Investors in Spotify's podcast business, they, yeah. they said they want to see this, the company start making money. <laughs> so if, if these people could get on that, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, that's odd. Oh, we don't want to be assholes, but we would like to... So go, see, <laughs> the, the, the thing we spent a billion dollars on... We would like to see a return on investment. And then, on and then Spotify goes, okay. Jeez, we never really thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you realize that <laughs> this takes a few centuries to, <laughs> to get off the ground. Yeah. So they want their money now. They, they want to see a return. And what Spotify's saying? They're like, well, okay. They go, they go, well, well, within a year or two. You just say that that's, every that's year really after year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we so see the light their, around the corner. They got their fucking, it's going to be a year or two. Yeah. So their ass is up against the wall. Pretty much, yeah. They're backed up against the corner. And they're laying off employees. <laughs> oh, they're uh, going to come calling back to Neil Young so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, you got to get us out of this one. <laughs> Neil Young's going to turn this, turn this fucking car around. Neil, I, I don't, how about $20 million <laughs> to come back for a podcast? We, we need Harvest Moon. <laughs> we need Harvest Moon. Uh some laid off employees are trying to land deals to continue producing shows that Spotify canceled. Among the titles Spotify has discussed selling is Conviction, which was about to release a new season when it was dropped in June. <laughs> 
the show's supervising producer at one point talked with Spotify executives about bringing in a buyer to secure the rights to the program for between $50,000 and $100,000, according to people familiar with the discussions. Days later, Spotify set a figure in the $500,000 price range. (laughs) So that's how much they need money. They're like... We they they, they, want, they want to sell it for the the people that own act, the people that are producing it want to sell it for for fifty thousand or a hundred thousand they're like five hundred thousand or we won't hear another offer. <laughs> wow, they're cash poor. Yeah, Spotify's got no money. Spotify's cash poor and it makes sense because I don't know anybody that everybody. It's the same with Netflix. Everybody's just mooching off other people's Spotify accounts. I think I pay for it like a loser, but it's the only one because I'm stealing somebody's HBO. I'm stealing somebody's HBO. I'm stealing somebody's yeah. everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I don't. But know. how I, often do you listen to Spotify? Every day. Every day. Every day. Oh, wow. So it was driving me crazy with the ads. Sure, that makes sense. So yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't go any longer. But do you do you listen to podcast on Spotify or do yeah, you absolutely the, not? Yeah. No, I listen to music. That's what I know it to be for. Yeah. Right. So quit. Tr- it's like everything else. Quit trying to be. We don't need an everything app. Just focus on being good at one thing. <laughs> Spotify's good at having music. Right. Apple Podcast was good at having podcasts. And you know what pisses not- me off every time I get on Spotify? I try to look up Heart of Gold and it's not fucking on there anymore. <laughs> Because I kicked my favorite artist off of it. Yeah. And now I got to go to YouTube to find Neil Young. Right. Why don't you just have all of the music, no podcasts, instead of half the music and the worst podcasts in the world? Yeah. That being Meghan Markle. And that's not to yeah. throw the Obamas and Joe, sweet, sweet <laughs> Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> uh, but here, yeah, everybody, every company now is trying to be a jack of all trades. What they forget is the end of that phrase, master of none. <laughs> Yeah, you said it best, Trent. <laughs> but it's actually not the end of the phrase. It keeps going. Oh, really? What's the end, what's the next part? A jack of all trades, a master of none, but often better than a than a master of one. Really? <laughs> yeah. I never heard that part. I think that's not, not maybe not word for word. I think. So. Uh, wow. Well, forget everything I said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we need is an everything app. <laughs> You know what, what Spotify you sold to me. Do? After Spotify. I heard the last part of that phrase, I've taken, I've taken everything I know and I've thrown that out the window. Uh, yeah. We need an everything app. What they need to do is rebrand Spotify into a cool letter that comes at the end of the alphabet. Perhaps <laughs> V or Z. <laughs> or I guess T is not more closer to the middle. But when you get to the last yeah, it's, five... It's around there. When you get to the last five letters, the letters yeah. start to get really cool. Well, what's the best bagel, Joe? In everything bagel. I agree. It would make sense that the best app would be in everything app. I, I could see that. I've, I've, yeah, so I'm sold now. Uh, speaking of selling things, uh-huh. the government... Uh, sorry, what, what, what is this article oh, from? Oh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. The government has a bridge to sell you. <laughs> Go on. Is it a bridge to nowhere? <laughs> or give you. <laughs> okay. States try to find new homes for structures... But best to check with the family first. Are you looking for a bridge? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you telling me right now? <laughs> Can't wrap my fucking head around this. <laughs> Iowa has one for you. It's a 128-foot bowstring-shaped Warren Pony Truss from 1912. If that's not your style, you can get a 183-foot trapezoid Pratt through Truss from 1892. Where am I going to put a bridge? Over in Oklahoma, <laughs> you can find a Camelback Truss outside Tulsa. Chances are your State Department of Transportation has a few historic bridges that would be happy to turn over for you. Uh, provi- over where? Pro- provided you take good care of them. In many cases, the bridges are free. You may this have to pay for the move, but there might be grant money available. Now, tell me this. Tell me this. If I buy a bridge, can I put it over a river somewhere? Can I connect if, it somewhere? If you have the right paperwork. <laughs> if you if you have property that crosses a river, yeah. So I could install my own bridge. You right, could install my your own bridge. It would be your property, and if it, the river is on your property, you—that's what—that's what some of these people are doing. Okay, but so that's who's are, buying it. Yeah, so, well, th- these are 
because I, I don't know if they're aware of this, but the size of the American home is getting smaller, <laughs> and people people don't really have room for bridges in their houses. Yeah, well, some people do. Very select pe- few people do, but these bridges are like historic monuments, so they're protected. Okay. So these states, they, now they're old, they're run down. Mm. The crumbling infrastructure, <laughs> which we hear so much about. We hear so much about. So Even much. they passed an infrastructure bill, but apparently it's all well, still that's shit. Par- that's part. Oh, that so they're getting plays, rid of the old ones. That plays into this, yes. So it's Biden's fault. It's that I, I have, to buy, wanna, I don't that wanna, I have p- to buy a bridge. I don't want to point fingers. But <laughs> 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 I, I listen, I don't point fingers at old it's men. Not, I mean, it's not 45's fault. It's not a, to the elderly. Uh, uh, <laughs> <it's>, yeah, <okay. laughs> but if, so the bridge, if it's listed on a national register of historic places, federal law requires they must first make an effort to preserve it. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let's keep that in place. <laughs> that's, that's not a, a roadblock at all. <laughs> so... Let's see. To comply, agencies post their soon-to-be-replaced historic bridges online, hoping to entice somebody to adopt them. In some cases, these bridges retire, retire to trail networks or golf courses where they spend their golden years hosting pedestrian cyclists and golf carts. Now, tell me this. Can you get them for free if you have a place to take it? They Some are free. You, ha- you might have to, to pay to, to transport it. Okay, so if I can Which pick I it up, it would probably cost a pretty penny. I would imagine the lugging a bridge, <laughs> <laughs> lugging a bridge over various bridges and yeah. highways. So some, a lot of them go to like golf. You probably air airdrop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably strap like it an to elephant a plane or something like that. An elephant? Oh, have it carried by yeah, an elephant, carried. like a war elephant? No, you, have you ever seen like? They when they rescue an elephant, they strap it to oh, a fucking do they really? helicopter. Or something. I've never seen that. Oh, that's fun. We should watch the YouTube videos later. <laughs> I would love to fire those up. <laughs> but sometimes maybe they could choo choo train a bridge. Anyway, yeah, you'd hate well, to get a lot stuck of in traffic. Trains go over bridges. Now we're getting into the weeds here. Well, uh, we're actually on the tracks. <laughs> So, but so a lot of them go to like golf courses and stuff. But sometimes they come, they become prized possessions of a small but devoted band of bridge collectors. Oh my Christ! Who give them pride of place on their property? The one trillion dollar infrastructure spending bill President Biden signed in twenty twenty one has money to replace lots of historic bridges. That should create a buyer's market. What kind of person buys a bridge? Well, somebody like Bruce Saucier. <laughs> so I would, if I, I could see myself getting into like small boutique bridges, mm. like something in like a, a Van Gogh painting of like the, like not Van Gogh, but Monet, the water lilies, you got a little bridge back there yeah. from the 1730s. I could maybe get with one of those, put it in my garden. If you had a garden, yeah, if you're a rich a guy garden. with a garden. You can't do these giant metal bridges though. That's insane. No, I've always wanted to like get into like, uh, I've always wanted to have enough money to get into like model trains. Yeah, well, it's not it's, that expensive, but it's it's, st- it's still pretty expensive. But you could sink some money into it for sure. Yeah, what you really need is an old guy that knows how to how to fix them when they break down. But tell me more about this guy who buys bridges. Well, he's like a rich. He's not very interesting. I just thought the name was funny. He's just a rich guy. He's buying bridges. But bought a bridge and put it on his property. There's another guy though, F- Philip Hart. In in 2011, Hart bought a truss bridge in Cotton County, Oklahoma, from someone who had bought it from the county. He had he had it moved 16 miles to his yard. By his own account, Hart is a sentimental man with a fondness for local history, which he attributes to his profession as a funeral director. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love things that used to exist, like people, <laughs> bridges. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, man. Who buys a bridge is nuts. He also bought a a, a uh, closed down bowling alley, which he fixed up and sold, hoping it would one day reopen. This is a quote: My wife told me you can buy anything you want if you sell this bowling alley. <laughs> I bought me a bridge. Go the one thing that you're in. That's, 
would piss your wife off way more than a bowling alley. <laughs> Dude, imagine you being like, honey, I bu- we, honey, we bought a bridge. <laughs> How pissed would your wife be? Yeah. You, you know, yeah, you know that phrase. I can sell you a bridge. It shows you're kind of a rube. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I fell for it. <laughs> I sold the bowling alley. I know you're gonna be happy. I bought a bridge, <laughs> honey. I bought a bridge <laughs> starring Matt Damon. <laughs> and now I finally have a place to throw myself off of. Yeah. But I was in, uh, in the phrase, if you believe that, I, I got a bridge to sell you. Do you know where that originated? Because I got curious. Probably in the bridge buying community somewhere, perhaps. Well, no. I, I got curious <laughs> because I, I. Right. So I looked it up. Okay. It's from a notorious con man. Did he actually sell a bridge? George C. Parker. Oh, from Parker Parker Brothers. <laughs> I don't think he had no relation, but he's a friend of the show. Welcome anytime. time. He died in 1936, so this guy, Philip Hoffman, would love him. <laughs> yeah, he probably put him in his funeral. Though. Yeah, but he repeatedly convinced people he sold, he was selling them the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> what? what does that even mean? <laughs> How could one uproot that? Oh, they just own it in place? Just No, they think they bought the bridge. They they think the this was they think in, they own it. It's like it's not going anywhere, but you own it. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. own it. He's a con man, and this was back in the eighteen hundreds. He th- people he would tr- he would trick unwary immigrants that the Brook- <laughs> the Brooklyn Bridge was being sold, <laughs> and, and he would sell that to them. It's the golden age of con men, yeah, like the eighteen nineties. Well, yeah, but also. It's no. It's kind of no different than NF to, to selling somebody an NFT. <laughs> that's a hundred. That's so true. Yeah, I saw it. So you know, there was like a. It's like a digital dr- illustration of like a whatever, like a chimp or something. Yeah, and he's like he has like headphones on or they something. They call it the bored ape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It sold it during the NFT boom for yeah. like five hundred million dollars. The guy's got it for sale for like five grand right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't get rid of the thing. He bought the br- the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, what a what an idiot! <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't lose my ass on <laughs> the board apes. Uh, so yeah, so he but he convinced people that he sold them the Brooklyn br- Bridge and police. The police removed several of his, of his victims from the bridge as they tried to erect toll booths. <laughs> and they go, what, what? <laughs> no, no, I bought. I bought, I bought the bridge. <laughs> no, I own. I own. I pay. I, I make they go, my they money go, back. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Listen, buddy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Come on, let's pack it up. <laughs> I go, no, no, I, got, I have the deed to the bridge. <laughs> and they go, what the fuck is this thing? Yeah. Put up a toll booth. That is so funny. Man. And then you got to go home. and The only thing worse than telling your wife you bought a bridge yeah. is going home and saying, you know the bridge I bought, honey? Yeah. We didn't buy a bridge. Yeah, you know... The bridge I bought, one of those famous bridges in the world. You know when I came home and I said I bought a bridge and you didn't talk to me for six weeks? <laughs> what if I told you he didn't sell me anything at all? <laughs> but we don't get the money back. <laughs> and I know I told you I was going to make the money back on the toll booth. Oh. <laughs> That's out the window, too. <laughs> right, so, and I know that, yeah, I talked in, in depth about the toll booth as a way to sort of monetize the bridge. But they shut that down right away because it, as it happens, I don't own the bridge. <laughs> so, what you, so what do you want to do for dinner tonight? We might have to go back to Hungary. <laughs> uh, we're going to go Hungary tonight and we're going to go back to Hungary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a tale as old as time. Everybody's been getting conned for their entire lives, basically. The entire human existence, there's been oh, yeah. con men. The internet company is conning us right now. It's yeah, insane. con con Edison. It's in their name. <laughs> it's in their name. <laughs> Edison, light bulb, yeah. con, we're taking your money. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's free. We're going to cost you a million dollars. Uh, well. So that's all I have. Yeah. Well, I think we I think we we did it all. I think we had it. We've covered it all. Covered it all until next week. Until next week. <laughs> Trent and Joe signing off. Have a good one. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.